For the homeowner who wants the ability to charge at a faster rate, level 2 charging options include the mobile connector and the wall charger. I feel that the mobile connector, which was previously known as the UMC, is the best bang for the buck for Tesla charging. The second generation that comes with the 2018 and newer Tesla models support 32 amp charging. The first generation originally sold with the Model S and X and supported 40 amp charging. I purchased one of these about three years ago on eBay for about $100. Due to the ease of removal and replacement, the NEMA 1450 charging solution is much cheaper than purchasing a Tesla wall connector. The two benefits to the wall connector are the nicer appearance and a faster charging rate, up to 48 amps on the long range Model 3, but only 32 amps on the short range Model 3. So if you're going to purchase a standard range Model 3, you will not see a faster charging rate than the included mobile connector. While the NEMA 1450 outlet uses a 50 amp breaker for continuous power usage, 40 amps is available which is about 80% of the size of the breaker. For most owners, 32 amps to 40 amps is an adequate power level. 32 amps allows around 28 to 30 miles per hour charging, and 40 amps allows 38 to 40 miles per hour charging. So even in a worst case scenario of an empty battery, it would take eight hours on a 40 amp and 11 hours on a 32 amp. As a warning, do not perform electrical work on your house if it is not permitted in your area due to local codes or other laws. Also, obtain any permits and inspections if required in your area. Here are the items needed for a NEMA 1450 installation. This is an Eaton 5754N NEMA 1450. It is one of the recommended industrial grade outlets by Tesla. Industrial grade outlets offer larger and more resilient plug connects. They also allow for better wire connectors with a plate versus a screw. These also tend to be larger and deeper than the consumer grade outlets. This is a Carlon B234ADJC outlet box, which is a two gang Newark box. It's important to get as deep a box as possible since the wires are thick and stiff and the outlet has inputs in the back. This is a cover plate that fits the outlet. Since the industrial outlets tend to be wider, make sure the cover plates have a hole large enough to fit them. This is a 50 amp breaker. Make sure you get the correct breaker that is supported by your electrical panel load center. Depending on local codes, you may need a breaker with a GFCI. Tesla mobile connectors have a built-in GFCI, so really the breaker does not need it unless required by a local electrical code. This is a 6.3 Romex copper wire. I purchased five feet since that's all I needed for this project. This wire is suited for indoor and inside wall installation, such as my project. Depending on your local codes, you may need conduits in your wall. My location does not. Cable staples are needed to attach the wiring to the wood studs. So I bought a box with a few of these. This is a three quarter inch breaker box wire clamp, which is used to attach that Romex cable to inside the electrical panel. This wiring protection plate gets nailed to the stud where any cables pass through. This is a wire stripper, which supports the six gauge cable that I will be using to cut the wires and to trim off the insulation. These needle nose and flat nose pliers are for bending the wires and inserting them into the electrical panel buses, breaker, and outlet connectors. In addition to a regular Phillips head screwdriver, this torque wrench screwdriver is for making sure the wires are torqued correctly. Different gauge wires and breaker and outlet connections need specific torque settings. This is the 100 amp electrical sub panel in my garage. This is roughly where the wire will be going. I need to drill a three quarter inch hole in the stud. 
Attach the wiring protection plate. Thread the wire through the hole. I make sure I leave enough inside the electrical panel box and enough wire to reach the outlet box. Strip about six inches of the outer wire jacket to reveal the four individual wires. Remove the paper that's surrounding the ground wire. There's a guide on the outlet which shows how long the bare wire needs to be. Cut off the insulation. Once the insulation is removed, now you can attach the wires into the correct outlet openings. Set the torque wrench to the right setting and then tighten to the required spec. Move the wire around a bit for proper tightening. The first wire installed is the neutral line. Next I have the two hot lines. And then finally I'm going to have the ground wire. I cut off a little bit more of the wire jacket to give more access to the wires. Since the wires are so thick and hard to bend, it's easier to use the pliers to help out. Once the wires are positioned correctly, start tightening them up. And lastly, attach the ground wire. Carefully push the wiring into the box and make sure the ground is facing up. Tighten the wire clamp inside the box. Now I will attach the outlet to the box with four screws. And now we can attach the cover plate. Two screws are good for now because I will be doing some more work later on. And now the other end of the wire that enters the electrical panel box. The wire will be entering the top right side of the box so I need to remove one of the perforated conduit covers with a screwdriver. Bending it with the pliers should get the rest of it out. Insert the 3 quarter inch conduit clamp. Thread the clamp nut from the bottom. And now insert the wiring into the clamp.
place the staple within 12 inches of where the wire goes into the outlet box. Cut the insulation jacket off the wire to just inside the panel box. Route the ground wire to the ground bus bar on the left hand side. Trim the excess ground wire. Now use pliers to insert the wire into the ground bus bar. Tighten the ground wire in the bus bar to torque spec. Attach the neutral wire from the breaker to the neutral bus bar. And then tighten the neutral wire to spec. Snap in the new 50 amp breaker into the panel. Route the two hots and neutral on the right side. Remove the wire insulation. And now attach the three wires into the correct breaker clamps. Using the torque wrench, tighten the three wires to spec. Since I was in the box, I verified the torque on all the other breakers. As noted in the beginning, please make sure all power is turned off before you work on any electrical panels or wiring in general. Bend and remove the metal so that the new breaker will show through. And now place the panel cover back on. And now I will turn on the outside breaker disconnect so that this panel is now hot again. Let's test the outlet. The left hot and bottom neutral should show about 120 volts. The right hot and bottom neutral should also show about 120 volts. So when we have the left and right hots together, they should show around 240 volts. And this is what goes to the mobile connector. Here's a view of me flipping the breaker to the on position. By the way, I moved the wire staple to the right stud so that it could be within 12 inches of the NEMA 1450. Here we can see that there's a green light on the mobile connector and everything should be ready to charge. Let's go inside and see what the amps and volts are. And considering that this is a Gen 1 a UMC, I am getting 40 amps. If this was a second generation, I would be getting a max of 32. And the voltage of 234 looks fine. And if I park my car in the far right hand spot, the cord still reaches. And that's about it for the NEMA 1450 installation. This is one of the two units that I have in my garage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.